Hello, welcome to Indic Law. My name is Arjun and I will be giving you an outline of the history of the making of our constitution. As you have already learned, the constitution of India is the fundamental law of the land and was drafted by the drafting committee of the constituent assembly. Before the newly drafted constitution was adopted by the people of India, the basic law of India included a series of acts enacted by the British Parliament. These laws were later repealed after the coming into force of our constitution. Now, we all know that European nations were looking for a passage to India to initiate trade relations and that the first entry into India was by the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama. Thereafter, explorers from various countries in Europe came into India and initiated trade relations. The British was a bit late into the game. However, it was determined to have a monopoly here. After the British East India Company came in, it eradicated the presence of other European nations in India and slowly began to acquire monopoly in trade and thereafter so to get administrative control. Subsequently, the Crown took the reins from the East India Company and took over the governance of the whole territory. The British Parliament had enacted the Government of India Acts for governing British India. They also contributed to economic development by introducing the railroad network, roadways, telegraphs, newspapers, etc. But we all know these were all for the selfish motive of facilitating trading. Similarly, all these British laws that were enacted during their rules have helped in shaping of our constitution. However, there is a negative side to this as well. Some of the laws that were adopted from the British we still retain even though they have become archaic and were repealed by the British Parliament itself. For instance, homosexuality was criminalized in India by the Indian Penal Court which was drafted by an Englishman. It was decriminalized just two years ago whereas the British Parliament legalized homosexual acts in 1967 by the Sexual Offences Act. So, we can see that some of the contributions were not actually contributions after all. In certain aspects, India's progressive thinking was set back by centuries. Getting back to the topic of our constitutional history, if we compare the constitutional structure of India with that of the UK, you can see that uh, there are many similarities in the system. Our constituent assembly retained the features that suited our nation. In addition to that, the constituent assembly also adopted certain features from the constitutions of other nations, making our constitution the lengthiest constitution in the world. The formation of our constitution as it exists today was not a short process. Many events preceded the historic moment when India adopted its constitution and it is important to learn about them. Now, let's take a look into the major events that preceded the adoption of our constitution. The legal and constitutional history of India can be traced from the time of entry of the East India Company in the early 17th century. The East India Company came to India for the purpose of trading under a charter granted by the Queen Elizabeth. Do you know what a charter is? It is a formal statement, especially by a government or ruler, of the rights of a group organized for some purpose. So yes, thus the company began trading in India. Something that was instrumental in the beginning of the British rule in India happened in 1757, the Battle of Plassey. In the war, the company's army led by Robert Clive defeated Siraj Daula, the then Nawab of Bengal. The company fought and won a number of wars against the Indian rulers and gradually started controlling many Indian territories. On gaining political and financial control over nations, the British introduced social reforms and harsh land taxes. This, along with other reasons, caused Indian to revolt against the company rule. This war is known as the First War of Independence or the Revolt of 1857. The British termed it as Sepoy Motini in an attempt to undermine the attack against the rule. The battle lasted about a year and six months. However, we were unsuccessful in this battle as the company won and the end of the battle marked the end of Mughal Empire as well as the rule of the company. After the uprising, the British Crown decided to take direct responsibility for the governance of India. The company, which had a strong foothold in the polity of the nation, was relieved of their powers. 
The ground rule that started in 1858 ended only in 1947, when India got independence. During its rule, the crown brought in various enactments for the governance of India. We shall learn about them in detail later in this video. Moving on to the developments towards the end of the British rule, we will take a look into the constitution.